So the final topic that I want to talk about from chapter 14.4 is to use linear approximations to estimate functional values. So what is a linear approximation? My definition is going to be my change in f, or if I wanted to think about it, my change in z value, my change in output value, is going to be approximated by the partial derivative at a point a, b times the change in x plus the partial derivative with respect to y at point a, b times change in y. And I'm going to draw a picture to help motivate what's going on. So let's say that we're talking about our x, y, z plane. And let's find a point a, b down in the x, y plane. So point a, b. And let's say that we have some function up here. I'm going to make my function look like a wavy carpet. These are my f of x, y. And my output lies up here at f of a, b. And what this is saying is, let's say that I want to approximate a point that's nearby. Instead of having to exactly trace along this the contours of this surface, I can estimate it by instead looking at the tangent plane. So if I want to know how much does my z output change as my x values change a little bit and my y values change a little bit, I can look at, well, what is my output when my x value changes a little bit? I'm going to step forward a little bit in the x direction, and then I'm going to move over a little bit in the y direction and how much am I going up or down? It's given by the slope along this curve. So there's some, this is my curve traced out by the vertical trace where y equals b, and my partial derivative with respect to x is going to be the slope of the tangent line. So instead of following along this curve, I am instead following on along the tangent line some distance x, well, delta x. Similarly, if I wanted to estimate my functional outputs, instead of going along the curvy surface, I could instead hold my x's constant at a, look at my partial derivative, look at the slope of this tangent line, and if I wanted to march over some distance delta y, and adding these two things together will give me some value out in my, my z values. And these the, the sum of these two changes will equal my change in z value. Maybe I should change in f or change in output, my change in z value. Why is this helpful? This is helpful for problems of the following sort where I want to do error approximations. So let's say that I'm a manufacturer of these conic objects made of plastic or something. And I want to find the maximum error in the volume of a cone when that cone has radius of 10 centimeters, a height of 25 centimeters, and both the radius and the height could be off by as much as 0.1 centimeters. Notice that it's, it's not good enough just to say, oh, well, it'll be off by 0.1 plus 0.1, which is 0.2, because each of these dimensions is going to affect the volume of this cone really uh, in, in a nonlinear relationship, right? Because it's not scaled out linearly as it expands or collapses a little bit beyond these boundaries. So we're going to use our linear approximation. And we're going to say that our maximum error, abbreviated by our change in volume, where our r is equal to 10 and our h is equal to 25, that's going to be given by my partial derivative with respect to r at 10, 25, times the maximum error in our r's, plus my partial derivative with respect to h evaluated at 10, 25, whoops, 25, times the maximum error in our h's. So let's break each of these pieces down. Our partial derivative, maybe I shouldn't call it F, I could have called it V because I labeled my function V, but you get the idea. Um, my partial derivative with respect to R evaluated at the point 1025 is going to be 
treating my h as a constant, I'm thinking of that as a coefficient, just like these other coefficients. And it means that my partial derivative with respect to r is going to be equal to 3 times 1 third pi r squared h. The 3 comes from polynomial rule, and that's going to cancel with the 1 third. And I'm going to evaluate it at where r is equal to 10 and h is equal to 25. These cancel, and I get r squared is 100 times h is 25. And that's going to be equal to, aha, this is easy math. I can actually multiply 25 times 100. I get 2,500 pi. Next, I'm going to look at my partial derivative with respect to h evaluated at the point 10, 25. This notation's a little sloppy. I shouldn't have variables in here, but you're OK with that. Um, let's take our partial derivative with respect to h. The partial derivative with respect to h is just 1. And so all that's left is the coefficients, treating r as a constant. So I'm left with 1 third pi r cubed. I evaluate that when r is equal to 10. Again, this is nice math. That's 1 third pi 10 cubed, which is 1,000. And so plugging these into our error approximation equation, we find that our delta v is going to be equal to f sub r, which is 2,500 pi times the error in r, and how much can r be off by? It can be off by as much as 0.1. And then I'm going to add my derivative with respect to h, which is 1 third pi times 1,000. And my delta h can be off by as much as 0.1 as well. And that means that I'm left with 250 pi plus 1 third pi times 100. Um, and I could get a common denominator and calculate this out. I'm going to factor out the pi. And this is pretty close to 250 plus 33 and a third becomes 283 and a third times pi is the total error and possible error in volume.